Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Mini Decks, where each week we cover three different Pokemon that, for whatever reason, might not need an entire episode to themselves. As always, this show is based almost exclusively off audience response, and this week you asked for Piplup, Trubbish, and Wimpod, so let's get right to it. Man, it feels pretty good to be back, doesn't it? Though Piplup is as cute as the buttons on his onesie, it's very proud and hates to be treated like a child. In fact, trainers generally have a hard time bonding with their Piplups because they prefer to do everything by themselves. A wild Piplup will become offended even if you try to offer it food because it thinks you're being patronizing. More for me, I guess. Though they are poor walkers on land, they are expert swimmers and can hold their breath for over 10 minutes while underwater. And as you may have already guessed, the whole evolution line is penguin related. Piplup's Pokedex entries say that it lives on the northern shores of Sinnoh, so much like many penguins, they thrive in cold northern climates. And its name itself, along with all its different international localizations, all have some onomatopoeic word for the sound of splashing, often with reference to it as little or small. This points us to the little penguin, the smallest species of penguin, which when fully grown averages about the same height as your basic Piplup. And what's more, this species of penguin is often affectionately called the little blue penguin because of its blue and white coloring. However, Piplup's evolution line as a whole comes from emperor penguins, the largest species of penguin on Earth. Piplup, Primplup, and Empoleon all have designs and personalities associated with royalty, and they all have crests that look like crowns on their heads. And not only can you see Piplup's tiny little crown markings just above his nose, but Emperor Penguin Chicks also have a distinct white mask. And if it doesn't remind you of Piplup's face, I just don't know what will, honestly. But now, let's switch gears and get down and dirty with that little trash bag from Gen 5, Trubbish. Trubbish is a Pokemon that was created when industrial waste was mixed with garbage and became sentient. This seems pretty crazy, but it's not a new idea in pop culture by any means. The idea of toxic waste becoming sentient and coming back to exact its revenge on us is kind of a cult horror classic, and always serves as a tongue-in-cheek cautionary tale for humanity's admittedly wasteful ways. Plus, Godzilla vs. Hedorah is just a great movie. Anyway, Trubbish eat pretty much everything they can get their weird spiky mouths on, often gorging themselves on garbage. In fact, they tend to follow around people who litter, so if you got a bunch of Trubbish hanging around your house, you might want to clean up your act. Especially since Trubbish like to burp up a poison gas that can knock out your average human for a whole week. Oof. When a Trubbish stuffs itself so much that its bag finally bursts, that's when it evolves into Garboder. Usually, Trubbish and Grimer compete for food, but in Alola, the Alolan Grimer actually eat the Trubbish, so thankfully, Garboder aren't a super common sight there these days. But don't get it twisted, many Pokemon fans out there love to trash on this trash Pokemon, but we don't think it deserves it. Pokemon has always made an effort to incorporate at least a few inorganic or inanimate object-based Pokemon into their roster, and we think it's important that they do so because it draws a distinction between Pokemon and normal animals. Pokemon can be mammals, reptiles, and insects, but they can also be plastics, minerals, and metals. It helps to define them as separate and somewhat magical lifeforms that go a bit beyond what we tend to normally define as creatures. And that's always been one of the biggest questions in the Pokemon world. What exactly are they? So keep the trubbish coming, Game Freak. And look, their faces are too cute, man. Come on. But hey, don't leave just yet, or else someone might confuse you for our last Pokemon of the day, Wimpod. Wimpod is the turntail Pokemon from Gen 7, and appropriately, it is very cowardly and can't really handle sudden movements or loud noises. If you startle a Wimpod, which you are very likely to do, it will scurry away on its many feet so fast that it'll actually clean the surface of whatever it's on. Which is nice, except for it'll probably also puke up a poisonous liquid that smells really bad, so like, eh. But actually, that's a pretty common defense mechanism for bugs, like the termite for example, who can spit noxious fluid that burns its target and also tells the other termites to be on guard. Wimpod spit totally does that too. Despite this, Wimpod are curious and do their best as scavengers above and below the ocean's surface. They like to pick up items they find in the ocean, like Ariel, and they're valued in Alola for keeping the waters clean with their collections safely hidden away. However, some people raid Wimpod nests because they occasionally hoard rare items in them. We're not going to mention any names, but if you're on a team based around skulls and you're thinking about doing this, don't. That's bad. It's a bad thing. Wimpod appear to be closely related to silverfish, which are triangle-shaped bugs that are a shiny blue-gray color and wriggle like a fish when running. They like to hide in dark, dusty places, but will skitter away if discovered in their hideouts. Their relatives are some of the most primitive insects on Earth. The looks and behavior of the silverfish match up very closely to Wimpod, but it's also likely that Wimpod is related to marine isopods, as it evolves into Galisopod, which literally has isopod in its name. And if that's the case, we're gonna have to go with the genus Lygia, which are cool, but they're also called rock lice, which is gross. But in the end, if you think about it, that's exactly how Wimpod is too. Anyway, that's it for this week. Hope you were able to retain some of this information, and at least one of you was inspired to become the world's leading expert on bug puke. If you want to suggest a Pokemon for next time, leave that in the comments below. Or follow the link in the description to sexy summertime deck shirts and our official decks discord. 
I'm Rival Jimmy, and this has been the Mini Dicks. Click one of these links here for more Pokemon related goodness. Don't forget to subscribe, and we hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.